Um, with us here today is Italo Vignoli. Um, he is the director of the Open Source Initiative and is uh, doing marketing for the Document Foundation. Excuse me. Okay. And uh, today he will tell us something about storytelling as a communication technique and about lessons learned in uh, LibreOffice and Open Office with this technique. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I don't know if uh, you have ever heard one of my speeches. You may wonder why I have a brain in my hands. It's always nice to have a spare one. Uh, you may need it. I'm old. So that, uh, but I'm, I'm talking about perception. So we are the brain. Uh, I, I will show what happens when you're speaking uh, and when you're communicating to your brain. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to, to start with a, uh, I've, I've estimated my, these percentages because I think it's important to, uh, as we are communicating, uh, we are communicating about software. I think uh, we should agree on the fact that 1% of the entire scenario are developers, 2% are contributors, 3% are software house employees, then you have 4% of conscious users, which makes 10% of, uh, of our listeners that understand what we say, and then uh, around 90% that do not understand and do not have any clue about software. This is unfortunately the reality. Uh, open source software speaks to, I would say, usually, to the three, top 3%, three ignores the other 97%, because majority of people speaks a uh, technical jargon. Uh, we don't communicate. We, we speak. Th these are two different terms. So first, uh, what is very important, we have uh, learned to steal. We have a very nice example. Uh, the company is based in one Microsoft Plaza in Redmond. You can probably guess the name of the company. They do fantastic marketing steal. It's useless to reinvent the wheel. Do what they do, do it better. Uh, now we come to the left and right brain. So when we, if you, if you talk to people, uh, let, let's say that this image is very nice because it shows exactly what happens in your brain. If you present, you are talking to this right hemisphere. If you talk, you are talking to the left hemisphere. Uh, let's say that the right hemisphere is uh, the creative part and the left one uh, is the accountant part. So these are, as you can see, these are accountants. If these people get something, they, through this area, which is called corpus callosum, they, they tell to the accountants, you have to file that in the memory. If you speak directly to the accountants, they, they don't even file into the memory. So we have to find a way to communicate and storytelling, it's one of the techniques that can help us. I've seldom heard anyone speaking about free software and telling stories about free software. Uh, this was Benjamin Franklin, so not, not, a, not a recent guy. And you say, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. Uh, I, I seldom hear uh, speeches about free software that are involving. Many are informing, are telling a huge number of concepts, but are not involving people. Uh, everyone should be familiar in Germany with this guy as a kind of a key role in the, in the history of the human, uh, or, or in the human history, and uh, uh, even a stronger role in, in Germany. He was a storyteller. 
So he, he was a priest, you know, uh, and uh, he published 95 theses. This is not storytelling. The theses are boring. He realized that. Uh, that was targeted to his peers, was not targeted to uh, the, the, the population. So what he did, he made the story. Actually, he translated the story. The story was already, already there. He translated the Bible in German. Of course, we are speaking about something that happened 500 years ago, but this is storytelling. People could read the story that were backing their, their uh, religious beliefs. And based on this, not on the thesis, there was a war, there was a schism. Uh, so that shows you that the, the power of storytelling, even if, it, of course, I say storyteller, but it was not aware of being a storyteller. It was just a smart guy that found the best way to communicate with the people he wanted to communicate with. Uh, would, would you prefer to, to explain lock-in? Would you prefer this image or a 20 minutes speech about uh, uh, the, the details uh, of the lock-in uh, technology? This shows you, I mean, you change operating system and you change the window. This is lock-in. It's a lot more immediate. It's easier. So we, we have stories in, in open source. Uh, I think in, in free software. Uh, I think it's, uh, we have to find the stories. It's not always easy. But in some cases, you can build the stories. And in this case, I will uh, tell you about the story that we have built for LibreOffice. I think that LibreOffice uh, has been a rather successful uh, project in terms of marketing. Uh, of course, we, we didn't manage marketing uh, only in the traditional way. Of course, we, we had product releases, launches, all that is, let's say, all that manual tell you that you have to say, but then we built a story that was uh, a hero, LibreOffice, based on some concept, a copyleft license, the independent foundation, the large number of volunteer developers, the community-driven project, fighting against, uh, I'm, I've not written the name, but you can probably uh, imagine who is this guy representing. Uh, with an objective that was the, the showing that uh, the community could sustain an independent project, that corporations were not able to sustain uh, an independent free software project, at least in a way that corporations would like uh, to, to sustain a, a free software project, so controlling the community. Because the problem is that corporations do not understand the community. And we had a rather strong fight against a corporation, and it's not Microsoft in this case, that wanted to control the open office community. And we got, we, LibreOffice was the open office project becoming independent from corporations, and we had a corporation fighting us. And at the end, uh, we, we got the objective because after six years, in, uh, in a month we will be six years old, uh, LibreOffice is uh, still alive, is growing, is stable, is improving. So we have shown that with a, with a determined community, a free software project can stay independent from a single corporation. Of course, we have a number of companies supporting the project, but this makes the, the project independent because if you have many supporters, you are not tied to a single one that can tell you what you have to do. This was the story with Sun and Open Office. Sun wanted the community to follow the company. Of course, we are speaking about 15 years ago, so it was completely different. Uh, time in history, but after 10 years, the project was mature enough to be 
to become independent, and the LibreOffice history shows that it, it is possible, it was possible, it is possible. Of course, to reach the objective, you have also to understand that you have to start communicating in a different way. Otherwise, people would have not followed us. We have created the enthusiasm of being in, a, in an independent free software project. You have to motivate people, and you have to motivate them on a daily basis. So, a few examples where we use storytelling instead of the boring corporate speak. And that was the area where we were able to engage the highest number of people. So, we were captivating. People was curious about an independent project, staying uh, alive independently. Uh, the, the, the opposite is bore. If you have heard any corporation uh, representative, they, they will tell, we do, we are, we. It's always very inbound, is always very reflective. They always say, we do. We always said, we together have done, we can do together as a community. And with the help of everyone, we can reach the objective. We have used conversation, no statements. Although we have statements in press releases, but we tend to have statements that are not, we are doing this and we are doing that, but it's, they are trying to add some news to the story. We have always looked outward and not inward. We have looked at the community outside and we still are trying to engage a larger community. This is always a challenge for a free software project. But at least we, we have been able, during the first year, to, to, to engage a large community. We started with 20 developers. After six years, we have uh, the number of people that have contributed to the code is over 1,100. So we, we engaged at least over 1,100 developers. We have an average of 300 active developers per year. Just by chance, Microsoft declares on their annual report that they have 300 developers active on Microsoft Office. We have used narrative, not words, not we do, we are the leading, the best, the and a lot of anecdotes. Uh, I use a lot of anecdotes in my speeches. I don't even remember which are the true ones and the false one they invented, but I don't mind. I mean, I, I know which are the good one and the, and the, and the, and the wrong one. But uh, for instance, when people ask me why you started in free software, and said it because I didn't want to use Outlook, which is a uh, a weird answer. I'm not a developer. I'm not a technical guy. It's, it's something that engages you because it's, I'm not saying because I wanted to scratch my itch. I didn't want to use a proprietary software. So I looked for an alternative to the office suite. This is absolutely true. It's not, it's not one of the invented anecdotes. I didn't want to use Outlook. I've never, I'm proudly ne been able to never use Outlook in my life. I've used Eudora until it was possible, and then Thunderbird. Even on a Windows machine, when I was using a Windows machine, and on a Mac machine, when I was using a Mac. Now I'm, uh, I've switched to, to Linux, which is not trivial for someone that is as a, as a degree in humanities, like myself. And we have tried to be entertaining, and compelling, and real. So we have basically, and I use these slides a lot, it helps in, if you think it's visually explaining the difference between the umbrella culture of a corporation staying on top of a product, of a project, and the mixing bowl, this is an American uh, way of representing it, the mixing bowl of a community staying together and working together in the same environment. It's very easy. It tells you in uh, one, one picture tells 1,000 words. Uh, I know that Apple is not overly popular in free software, but for instance, they did some very smart things. When uh, 
IBM launched the PC. IBM was a big, huge corporation at the time, and Apple was uh, the small company, although they were number one in PCs, but IBM was a lot more, a lot bigger. With this single ad, they positioned themselves as the, they were welcoming IBM in the PC environment, not the opposite. So IBM was second after Apple in their environment. Is a, is a way of, of telling a story. You tell, I'm already in, in the market, you are entering my market. So welcome IBM. Position the company with a few words. Uh, exactly the opposite as that genius of the Sun uh, marketing uh, did uh, by throwing away one million dollars, making advertising. Uh, these are the buses of an American city. Can you guess which was, was the city? I, I've said the, the name of the city before. Yes, they throw away one million dollars making advertising on the city where 95% of uh, inhabitants works for a single company. So if you want to throw away $1 million, this is the worst way. And uh, I, I went to Santa Clara to shake hands to that idiot. Because I said, you know, when, when you have the opportunity of meeting one paramount idiot, you should leverage the opportunity. <laughs> so if you say a concept in words, uh, after 72 hours, you remember 10%. If you say that with images, you remember 65%. These are, of course, it's not me telling that. These are researches done by uh, medical people, uh, psychologists. So, uh, and uh, actually, which is worse, according to this guy, which is uh, an authority in studying the brain behavior, uh, brain interprets each single letter as a kind of image, so it creates a problem for our synapses. And you can imagine being 62 years old and having a few synapses left, which problem causes to me. It's less for you, but bigger to me. Anyway, I'm joking, but for instance, if you, if you, you work on emotion, you create a way of raising the interest just by a shot of dopamine. You don't need to uh, to, to people uh, to, to stay awake without any reason. You just provide them a shot of dopamine that helps them in staying alive. So that is easy. For instance, this image is so simple. Uh, it doesn't say be, behave to the dog. It says, I make it to the fence in 2.8 seconds. And you, it's very effective. This explains a lot about speed. So, in a world without walls at the end, who need windows? No one. So, of course, uh, I've tried, I mean, speaking about storytelling in 20 minutes is not trivial, so I've tried to send out some provocative ideas. I'm happy. It, Usually, I do storytelling trainings in universities is eight hours. So 20 minutes, eight hours in 20 minutes, it's a little bit challenging. Uh, but I'm finished even earlier than expected. Uh, the idea is just to give you some, uh, some provocations about the, the concept of storytelling, about the, the fact that when we speak about free software, we should become a lot more engaging than we usually are. I've heard in many events people boring to death about their projects, and they, they were very enthusiastic, but being enthusiastic uh, is not enough. We are the challenger against proprietary software. It's useless that, I mean, Free software is better than proprietary. The problem is that 97% of the world around thinks exactly the opposite. 
So we have to convince that 97%, not the 3% that is already convinced that free software is better than proprietary software. And you have to shock that 97%, because otherwise they will never listen to you. So explaining vulnerabilities, for instance, uh, in a technical way has no meaning. Just give you numbers. I, I totally agree on the fact that you should be picky about the meaning of each vulnerability. But I can tell you that, uh, for instance, comparing LibreOffice with Microsoft Office, when uh, we discussed with, uh, I, was, I, I said this this morning, when uh, we met for the first time uh, mini, the Italian Ministry of Defense, their, their question was, uh, how do you compare with Microsoft Office in terms of security? And I said, wrong question. The right question is how Microsoft Office compares with LibreOffice, because we are one order of magnitude better, so you usually compare the worst with the best, and not the opposite. Then I show a, a, a chart where nine vulnerabilities against 111. So it, it was easy. There was no even no additional question on, on my statement. Questions now from you. Yeah, thank you very much. Any questions from the audience over there? Thank you for releasing the uh, presentation under free license. However, the Vignoli.org website is uh, not working. Where I can download it from? It's not working intentionally. I mean, I have another two websites which are working, are ItaloVignoli.com and ItaloVignoli.org, which are two blogs. The org is in English, the com is in Italian. Uh, this, uh, I've registered that, but I didn't have the time to set up the okay. blog. Is it, is it available for download from this website? Sorry? Is, it, is the presentation available for download? Uh, I will make it available, yes. Uh, next week we have the LibreOffice conference in Brno. So I, I because, just wait a week. <laughs> because because while, while, while you've been speaking, we, we, we get a, we got, we, I've been chatting with a friend of mine that we want this presentation to, 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 to teach the people working in our organizations sure, how you no, do no, the, no, the, no, the proper no, free software propaganda. No, no problem, and I'm happy. I've, I've done uh, uh, sessions, and I'm happy to do that uh, whenever. Of course, uh, I cannot travel the world uh, for free, but if you pay me the expenses... I'm happy to do that because I think it's important to and uh, to do a real workshop because that was you know 20 minutes is nothing. Okay, any more questions to Italo? Okay. Hi Italo. We you said that uh, uh, to do the 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 advertising and so on uh, it is a good idea to to copy uh, uh, other companies. Um, I have noticed that, that uh, some projects also copy things like their press releases, and I have the sensation that that is not a good idea. What is your because they tend to be, as you say, uh, they, the, the, the projects tend to write things that are very corporate, very boring, etc, because they are copying from companies like the press releases that, that Microsoft does. Do you think that that is fair that they should copy the advertising but not the press releases, for example? I think the, the, the concept is still like an artist which means get the ideas and improve it. Of course, it's not... Sometimes a boring press release may do its work. It depends. Of course, uh, uh, when, when I started with OpenOffice, not with LibreOffice, because that was already... But uh, OpenOffice was releasing three press releases or four press releases per year. And I started in Italy to release two press releases per month. And I said, how can you do that? And I said, some of them are just boring, I know, but at least they keep the name open office in the mind of journalists. The, the name was not there. So the first objective was create a kind of mental folder with the a, with a word open office on it. Then, of course, uh, when, when the mental folder is there, then you can become more sophisticated. And I totally agree that it, writing 
all compelling press releases is almost impossible. I mean, mission impossible. Uh, let's say that we should have a one every two or three, which is really breaking news, and the other are fillers. It's difficult because real breaking news are difficult to, to have. But I think that our major opportunity is to, uh, I, I don't know if it's an English word, so uh, some can correct me. Uh, out, I use the word outbrain Microsoft, so which is uh, over, over, overtake them uh, in terms of brain that we put into project. I don't know if it works in, in terms of new, new word. It wasn't the word five minutes ago. <laughs> because I think that this is one of our opportunities. I mean, they have the con they are conditioned by the stock market. So in some cases, they will never write something in press releases. We have the opportunity. We don't have we don't have shareholders. We don't have. I mean, it's a completely different approach. We can be a lot more uh, freewheeling in in our creativity and find ways of writing stuff uh, which is completely different. Of course, not to the point of shocking the journalist, because you know that if you shock the journalist, then the press release goes into the, uh, the, the trash, which is not our objective. Shock it a little bit so it reads it, but not to the point that... And do you have any like collection of good storytelling examples for like open source free software or in general? Because like also maybe more in general, like not, I, I mean, LibreOffice, you, you showed this example with, but. Of course, um, I, I know one project, almost only one, not being a developer, I, I, I can only know the project I'm working inside. But I think that every, uh, even, Every developer has his own stories. The, 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 the problem is that if you look at code in terms of code, then you don't have any story. But if you look at the fact that you have solved maybe a bug that was there, has been there for 12 months and everyone was waiting for the bug to be solved and there was companies stuck. I mean, you have a way of building the story even on a bug. Imagine the guy that sits on a, behind a, a, a desk and waits for you to solve his damn bug that doesn't allow him, just because it was a bug of LibreOffice, to insert an image uh, centered on a, on a table cell. That guy would kiss you. So, you know, even on a, on a stupid bug, you can build a story. Any more questions? But you have to think about story and not, you know, code is fundamental, but code, unfortunately, sorry to say that, but code is boring. But code can be made nice because then there is people waiting for the code. And that brings a story behind it. Any more questions in the audience? Okay, then thank you very much, Italo, again for your talk. Thanks. Thank you.